So in a lot of the things that we do, we talk to different people from a college president to lawyers to CEOs of companies. Today we're talking to Mark Jenkins. Mark Jenkins runs a company called Urban Purpose. Now Urban Purpose has a ministry out there that where they help people in need. What is people in need? People in need is from the guy that's homeless that live, is living under I-65 to the single mom that is dealing with an addiction that has you know multiple kids that they're trying to help. This was a wonderful, wonderful interview with Mark where it kind of goes from his background of being from Jackson, Tennessee and going through college and being involved in church, but then realizing that what they were doing in their ministry at their church was great, but he wanted to make more of an impact. He wanted to do more. And so he took the proverbial leap and went at full time into helping people in need. This is a wonderful story that I know you are going to enjoy. So tell me a little bit about you. I know we've known each other for a while, but give me an idea of your background, where you came from, you know, jobs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I grew up in Jackson, Tennessee. Um, no, stayed, I didn't know that. Yeah, Sweet. stayed there and uh, went to college at Union University. So I went there, uh, graduated in 2004. I got married right out of college and we moved down here uh, to Birmingham so I could go to Beeson Divinity School. So you were, you were born and raised in Jackson and then just went right there to Union because I know exactly yeah. what it is. Yep. Stayed in Union, like pretty involved growing up yeah. like with the school, uh, parents involved in some stuff there. And so, you know, had a good connection there and really liked it. And didn't really want to stay home, but loved the school. For and sure. so, you know, lived two miles away, but tried to live on campus and kind of get away from home a yeah, little no bit doubt. and stuff like that. So, yeah, they moved down here to go to Beeson Divinity School. Uh, did that uh, from 2004, 2007, graduated from there. And uh, my wife was a teacher during that time in okay. Hoover uh, schools. And then I got on, went on staff at Shades Mountain Baptist Church with their youth. And so was the uh, was an associate student minister there for four years. Okay, so you left Union. You came out here to go to Beeson, yep. which is the Divinity School at Sanford, at Sanford correct? Yes. Um, so kind of been in the church world. Church world for a fair amount of right. uh, time. Um, and so during that time, uh, like with the youth, one of the things that you started trying to get us really involved in uh, was like serving in the community. Right. Um, and so we would do stuff like meals at homeless shelters, yeah. uh, like service projects, things like that, trying to get them plugged in. See, like most of our kids were Hoover and Vestavia. Okay. And so trying to get them exposed yeah. To, to more uh, more things, more people, but also kept running into a wall, getting frustrated because there wasn't like a lot of opportunities where you could really invest in people long term. Okay. You just serve a meal, yeah, yeah, put it on a plate, that sort of thing. And so uh, that's kind of what led me to kind of down the road. I might get too far ahead of myself, but yeah. to where we are, where I am now. But so so the let's talk about the. Being involved in church, being involved in the in ministry, yep. because I mean, ministry for so many people, whether it be a you know, guy working a camera to a guy leading worship to a guy preaching to you know yep. being in students, because um, <clears throat> there's a thousand stories out there. I felt the Lord calling me. Why, why did you decide to get into? Did you go to? Did you you went to Beeson and finished it at Beeson? Yeah, I went to Beeson, finished at Beeson. Oh wow! Okay, interned at. Uh, so part of it was, you know. Long story, back when I was at Union, right, had a guy that, uh, I mean, sorry, back when I was in high school, yeah. there was a guy that went to Union and was an intern at our church. Okay. Uh, and got close to him. He coached basketball teams, yeah. you know, small groups, stuff like that, went to camp with us. Got to be close to him. He lived at our house, like in our basement during the oh, summers. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Our family got to be close with him. He moved down here to go to Beeson. And so then I was at Union, going okay. to Union. And so I had the Beeson connection. Well, then he got on staff at Shades Mountain. Okay. And so when I was at Beeson, we were still close. Okay. So then he hired me to be his intern. So there's a lot of yeah, connections. Sure. I mean, part of Beeson, part of just the, you know, seminary, you had to, had to get an internship. Yeah. Uh, kind of, I don't know, second or third year. And so that was an easy connection. And so got got plugged in with the students. And then he took a job as a pastor in Nashville, uh, literally right as I was graduating. And so he wasn't the, there was a youth minister uh, over everything, yeah. Scott Heath, uh, 
incredible guy. And Jay, my buddy, uh, worked under him. Okay. And so when Jay left yeah. to go to Nashville, there was a, you know, I was graduating. I knew the students. Perfect storm. You know, uh, yeah. was close with them. And so it, it just all kind of worked out. So in a lot of ways, it was not like, I mean, it, it, could, I mean, it could appear coincident. You know that it all worked out that way. Right. I know it was God's hand and everything, but it wasn't like this strong. Like at age whatever, I was like, I'm going to be <laughs> at age seven. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go be youth minister or yeah. do anything. Like it wasn't that. It's just pieces kept falling right. in place, and it, and it worked out. Okay, so. so part of our relationship is came in through fitness. Yep. So throughout throughout your your I say career throughout your life, how has where did the fitness part come in? It wasn't really a big part. I mean, I played, you know, I'm five foot eight, so, uh, and not super fast. So sports, well, I, play, I, try, I love basketball. Combination. Yeah. And I played, tried to play basketball in high school and, you know, eventually that right. hit a ceiling. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, would do stuff, be active through that, but wasn't, you know, really into it. College, you know, did the intramural sports yeah. thing, but wasn't much for working out. I think it was like I got married when I got engaged okay. senior year. I was like, okay, I need to get in shape. I got to get in shape. <laughs> and so started working out with some buddies and then moved down here and always would kind of stumble through like the whole Planet Fitness or joining a gym, Absolutely. like just kind of trying to figure it out, different plans that you find yeah. on the internet. And uh, but then like having kids, remember it was like our last kid. Uh, my wife got pretty sick after. Mm -hmm. and it was just the whole. Life's crazy. Had two little ones. Third right. kid. She's sick. Weight ballooned. Super out of shape. And so uh, started trying to get back in shape. And then a, a guy from church was like, hey, you should try CrossFit at J19. Cool. And I Googled it, and it was like three minutes from my house. Sweet. And so went there, <laughs> met Kelly, who owns that, uh, and have been there ever since. That was about six years ago. Wow. And then met you, I think, through competition at yeah. J19. And all that. So that's how that kind of fell in place. So it was kind of like since college been here and there part of my life. But I'd say over the last six years, it's been pretty consistent gotcha. part of my life. So so you're at the church now. What are you full time? How long, yes. were, how long, how long have you, did you do that full time? I did four years full time. Okay. Um, I did you know part time finishing up school. Right. As an intern. And then, then, then what did you transition into after that? For after, after, church. After, after church. After church. So part of what I was saying earlier is, you know, trying to find the stuff with um, with the youth to do in the community. Right. I was getting frustrated. Like, you know, you just, you, this, a shelter would say, sure, you can come serve a meal this day, or you could do a holiday meal, or you do a service project. I'm like, you don't ever really get to connect with those people. There's no relationship. That day. There's, There's no, no relationship. relationship. Okay. And I don't want to like dog on that stuff too much because I can get on a soapbox about it. Yeah, for sure. But. I think the Lord uses those things to absolutely to do good things and to prompt people, but that started some of the frustration. And so uh, this guy that I work with now, his name's Jim McFarland, his sons were in the youth group okay. um, when I was working at Shades, and his younger son, Reed, was in a discipleship group that I led. So I had Reed in a discipleship group from his eighth grade year, when this was back when I was interning, then the years I was on staff full-time. So I had him eighth grade to twelfth grade. So got to be close with him. Okay. Got to know his dad some, yeah. you know, just um, through that. But the Lord was doing stuff in Jim's life. He's doing stuff in my life. Right. It kind of it converged. We wanted to do some stuff with the youth. We're like, man, we need to do some stuff where they can like dig in a little bit, like and not just you know this you random tried, stuff. You saw a problem. The yeah. problem was you were in the youth ministry, but like you didn't feel like you were making an impact on these kids' lives simply well, because. They didn't have, you didn't feel like there was a great area for there them was, to just totally get invested Yeah, in. there wasn't, uh, for the, we had, you know, it was a big church, big youth group. I had these kids, I had a, a small group of kids that loved going to a shelter and serving a meal. I had a homeschool kid that literally would come, we'd go to a shelter once a week together. Cool. You know, it was cool stuff that was making an impact, but it was like stuff that it was still like, felt like I was hitting this wall. And I'm reading scripture, knowing just to care for the poor knowing that we're going to invest in the poor, knowing what like relational ministry right. looks like. It's the whole, you know, approach to try to take to students or anyone you're ministering to is about relationships. But with the poor, we're treating them like, I can give you this one-off meal, pat you on the back and say, you know. Be on your way. 
be on your way. And that's Bob was not pretty, Bob was pretty, pretty specific, clear. Pretty specific so about that. I wasn't really looking to like jump ship, but Jim and I connected over, you know, doing something with you. So we collected some blankets, coats, uh, stuff. This was like January 2010. Okay. And it was freezing. Like it was literally, I mean, it was so cold. This day we decided we got all the stuff together and we went downtown. And we were naive. We didn't know what we were doing. I mean, we were green. And we parked <laughs> on 3rd Avenue and got out and uh, got the boxes of stuff out. We got some hot chocolate, some brownies, blankets, coats, whatever. And people just started coming, right? <laughs> and it, looking back, I would never do that again the way we did it. But um, we, we did that. I had to get some of the youth back. To church, like to the, their parents, whatever time it was, I had to take a gr- crew back. And Jim stayed down there and met some folks. Well, he met some folks that were living, we were at like Third Avenue, right around Firehouse Shelter. And he met some guys that were living just a couple blocks back under I 65. Okay. So he went back under there for, I can't remember the exact reason why. Um, he took them something, uh, wasn't very far, got to know them and asked them, hey, is there anything else you need? And they said something about firewood for their fire barrel nice. and stuff like that. And he's like, I can do that. So he brought them back some firewood. I think they were pretty surprised that the guy actually so, came so, back. So so you guys go down to go downtown to give some blankets and just keep people warm and just kind of the goodwill Try thing. Try and connect But with then your folks. buddy goes back to these people's, I hate to say this, where they're living, their house, where they're, they're, they're Under rolling. I-65, there's under literally the a the bridge. fire barrel under the bridge and mattresses around it and... A little ways from there, you know, it's, it's like where Spire's energy is now. Yeah, yeah. Around that area, there was an old tire warehouse. It's burnt down since then. Um, but it was abandoned, but there's tons of tires. <laughs> burnt down. Uh, <laughs> and just some kidding. people slept in there. Um, some people slept in there. Some guys slept under the bridge. He made a connection with them. And so when he would go back, he got to know them through bringing the firewood back. Right. Well, he'd call me and say, hey, when you left, you know, met some of these guys. You want to come back with me, you know, let's go hang out with them, go meet, like, whatever. And so we were able to start this relationship. And so I was, he had his company, he had a construction company okay. that he owned. Um, and so he had some, I mean, obviously he had a, he had a job and uh, he was running the company. Right. He had some flexibility to go, you know, peel off and go down there when he wanted. I had some flexibility to the church. They right. knew what I was doing, but also there was, you know, he'd call me and I'd be like, man, I got a staff meeting or I got to yeah, be at sure. this thing or we've got this thing going on. And I couldn't always... Go. Just drop it, yeah. And so, but I jump in when I could, and eventually Sundays at three o'clock became a consistent time that we would go down there, and then through the week different stuff. But Sundays at, at three became just a consistent time where Jim's got construction day. He's got a big four door Chevy truck, yeah, and we drive back under there, pots of soup, chili, you know, stuff like that. And just hang. So just, what you're doing, just hang out you've kind of created the consistency of, of, like you said, creating that relationship with these people. That's, the, I mean, I'd say the biggest thing that we've done over the years, not to get too far ahead, but yeah, it's creating consistency. They see people come all the time to do the one-off projects. Right. And so they expect that. So their mindset when they see you is get as much as I can, mm-hmm. as quick as I can, because they're going to be gone. And so... Why not? If, if, if Thomas comes down and he's serving me a meal, why not hustle Thomas, at least try, because I'll never see him again. Yeah. And what does it matter? You know? For sure. That's, that's the mindset. And so what we really worked hard to do is like it basically, you know, just stubborn enough to keep coming back and showing we're not, that's not who we are. Yeah. We're, we're going to show up. And hmm. I think they thought, you know, I've, I, Still wearing my sunglasses inside for some reason, but I've always got sunglasses on. Yeah, Jim's always got a big pair of black sunglasses on. We're in a big black truck. They thought we were the police. They thought we were the you know. They thought we were like spying on them for somebody. They didn't yeah. know. They're, I mean, they're just totally they're skeptical because they don't trust anybody. Right. So you've got to like consistently lay the groundwork of being there um, to establish trust. Right. Okay. Hmm. So you're at you're at the church at this point. Yeah kind of developed some consistency of going down so, helping these people yeah. that are homeless. So where, where does it go from there? So, you know, that happened in 2010. And so like the beginning. So over the course of that whole year, Jim and I are trying to figure out like kind of 
how this is, you know, obviously at the very beginning, we didn't think this would be a full blown thing that we're doing. Right. You know, might be just something we just do, but not in yeah. terms of a job or anything like that. And so, but over the course of the year, you get to keep knowing these guys, you start to understand their struggles, understand what they're going through. Then you start thinking, well, you know, how do we help? How do we make an impact on their life, you know, and, and help give them some, some resources, some tools, um, you know, and, and trying to look at, you know, there are resources and there are tools out there in our city. You know, there's, there's good places, good programs, right. all that kind of stuff. Like, are we trying to reinvent the wheel? Do we have like a role to play? Um, you know, all those questions. Yeah. And so, but eventually decided that, that we fit a niche that, that a need that wasn't being met. Um, and, and decided wanted to give it a go full time. Full time. And so, uh, I talked to my boss, like I mentioned, Scott at the church, and he was real. I mean, he was real, super supportive, and we just kind of made a plan to finish out that school year. Okay. Um, with the kids that you know minister to them, uh, like that group that I was super close with that had gone like eighth grade oh, yeah. to twelfth had graduated, um, and then I'd picked up like a new discipleship group uh, that were seniors. Their their guy, uh, leader had to move away and. Just wanted to keep yeah, some consistency with that sure. group, with the kids, whatever, just finish a school year strong. And so, like, work at the church, but also kept doing what we were doing, and also all the fundraising, yeah. everything to kind of be set up to where when May 31st happened, you know, of 2011. Gotcha. So, full. So we had a year and a half of, you know, God kind of sorting out what we were, or yeah. us sorting out what He was calling us to do getting things in place, fundraising, all that stuff. We had about a year and a half uh, before I stepped out full-time. So you went do that. had a full-time job, insurance, the whole nine, day, uh, I mean, yeah. taking care of family to do what you're currently doing. So tell us about what yeah. that is, the name, all that kind of stuff. So the ministry's name is uh, is Urban Purpose. Um, I, I don't even know if I could tell you, explain to you why, where it came. I mean, I, I could, but, you know, yeah. it, was, it was a long story of just back and forth. That was a hard part. Names, logos, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, making all those decisions. But Urban Purpose um, and started out, just like I said, grown a lot over the years. But at the core of what we do is we build relationships and get to know people in need. And okay. so uh, if that's a homeless guy, on the street, right in downtown Birmingham, stereotypical crack addict, alcoholic, sleeps outside, bounces around shelters, panhandles, right. the whole nine. That is, you know, that group. Yep. To, and I mean, we've we deal with anybody and everybody, mm -hmm. over the mountain, suburban Vestavia Hoover kids that have gotten tangled up in the opioid epidemic. And parents don't know what to do. Wow. They've lied, stole everything, um, and parents are at their wits end and don't know what to do. Gotcha. And they've sent to rehab five times and whatever. Yeah. In that case, uh, single moms who you know have a couple kids, no dad in the picture, no child support. They're sitting there saying, "I can go get this nine dollar an hour job." Right. You know, but also I've got three kids that need childcare, and the money doesn't make sense, and right. the money doesn't work. Um, and how how am I supposed to do this to the person coming out of jail? They yeah. don't have anywhere to go. All that we've dealt with it, and so in some ways, I mean, it's a broad brush, like you know that anybody that comes to us. I mean, we cut we get uh, families from our church that come to us, or other churches that have heard about us, and say, I've got a nephew, cousin, sister, right. You know, whatever. So the, and we turn people in need. Yeah, it's broad. And it you know, we think about and we do we do a lot with the homeless population downtown. Right. Um, but we also I mean, I, I could get the the laundry list of suburban, over the mountain, I mean, young kids, moms. When you say young, what do you mean? I when I say young, I mean like early to mid twenties. Yeah. Trending towards the late twenties. Uh, they dabbled in stuff in high school or in college. They started doing pills. Uh, you know, they got hooked on painkillers, that sort of stuff, and went to get some more painkillers, and that was out. And so the guy's like, hey, I got this stuff. You want to try this? Boom, they're hooked on heroin, and they can't get off. It goes quick, doesn't it? It goes. It's crazy. And that's, I mean, I, you took it. 
I've got a billion soapboxes I can get off on. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that is an epidemic that's happening um, around us that I don't feel like, the, and I say the church, I'm not talking about any particular church, but just the church is not Rich addressing. Enough. I mean, the um, tens of thousands of people in our country uh, are dying every year of drug overdose. And, um, and, you know, when you think about it, not to get too much off the tangent, but when you think about it, I don't know a lot of drug addicts, I've known a lot, that, that just are like, you get a few, you know, I just really like to get high. It's just fun, and I like it, and that's just what I do. Most people hate it. Right. They're full of shame, they're full of guilt, uh, they hate what they're doing, and they would give anything to change. Right. But there's something off. Like something's, I mean, something that they're chasing, they're escaping, they're running away from, they're trying to mask. All that stuff's happening. And I feel like we're sitting on our hands too much. So you're, what you're saying is, is when you see a drug addict, they're not, they're not chasing the feeling. They're, yeah, they're they might in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. But they're chasing something else. In the beginning, maybe they're chasing a feeling. It's fun. The high is incredible. All that stuff. But eventually, they hate it. Yeah. And I think just, and you know, that, that's, a, that's a demographic, kind of the suburban, uh, predominantly white in our city, over the mountain culture, we dealt with those kids. We've dealt with moms, dads, 30, 40 year olds that are getting tangled up in it. But then there's also the poor in all over our city, you know? Right. And it's all of it. And we tend to, and I say we, like the church, like we tend to approach them as they're a problem that we need to fix. Okay. And that we, we need to come up with a solution. And there's a place for solutions. But there's a place to, like, if we back up and don't get ahead of ourselves and look at this as the long game, yeah. there's relationships to establish. People, there, there are people to know. There are names to, to, to get to know and stories to value. And when you can do that, it's a lot easier than to say, hey, let's make this change together. Let's, let's walk this road together instead of just saying, hey, here's a great, because this is us early on. I thought we've got access to drug and alcohol recovery centers. So if a guy under the bridge wants to go to recovery, we'll get him there. Right. We've got connections with jobs. We can get them a job when they graduate. We can help them find a place. Silver platter. Who wouldn't want it? Right. But there's so much going on. There's so much baggage. So back up. Friendships, relationships, mental health care, counseling. Let's lay some framework. So there's great resources out in our city. For sure. But I think what we're missing is the, the, the groundwork that needs to be laid so that they can run with those resources and run with those things. And as a church, as the church, we should look at it and say, I mean, these, these are people to know, yeah. stories to value. The guy living under the bridge is an image bearer of God. Amen. And he's not just a thug. And if we see him as a thug or a bum or a loser, then we think, and here's what you can do to fix it. And we take this very paternalistic approach kind of save your mentality instead of, and come be my friend. So, sorry. What, that no, was, that's great. That, that was wonderful. So, so what I think what we're, what I'm hearing is it's a little bit different thought process to how, to how to help people, people in need because people in need is broad. Right. But there's a large focus on the addiction community. Yes. Okay. So instead of, cause this is, I think what happens. Here's the thing. I've dealt with the addiction thing in my family mm -hmm. from immediate family to distant family. And what happens is there's a thought process of to distance ourselves mm -hmm. from that on a number of reasons. Yep. What you're saying is instead of saying, Hey, drug addict number one, here's what you need to do. You go, Hey, instead you go drug addict number one. Hey, what's your name? Yeah. Hey, we, wait, hey wait, wait, tell me, tell me about yourself. And well, you, so you're going to create that relationship. It's just yeah. like, it's just like asking a girl on a date. It's not like, hey, I'm Thomas. You want to go on a date? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is you are, God, sounds like a crazy term. You're courting this person. You're getting to know this person yeah. so that you can hopefully get inside we, deep enough to them to help. So we, I, I want them to trust me. Right. You know, I want them to know that I see them as a person. I don't see their addiction. I mean, I see it and I understand it and I'm not naive. And, and we, we can be pretty hardcore on people and accountability and structure and all that stuff. Yeah. But if it starts from a place of, I care about you, you know, I care about 
who you are. Do you like to, you know, you like comic books? Do you like to go fishing? Do you like basketball? <laughs> yeah. Do you like whatever? Like you're a person. Right. And all they know is people see me as like, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, Joe Blow, the drug addict. And that's all I'm known for. And I'm going to know, no, man, you're, you've got talents and you've got skills and you've got dignity and you've got worth and you've got all those things. And, and it's not a slam dunk. I mean, you still go through the, yeah. the relay, all that stuff, but it, it just starts off. And so they trust you. And then what happens is, you know, uh, a cool story. I think one of the first guys we met when Jim back up to that first story, when he went under yeah. the 65, guy that we first met named Tim, he's been to rehab. I don't know how many times since then, before then and since then, but he's also at rehab right now. And this might be his sixth, seventh shot. But I got to believe, I got to choose to believe, as skeptical and as naive, that this is going to be the time. But who does he call when he needs to go? He calls us. Right. And he's, he's, I mean, he's, he's uh, blown apartments that he's gotten that we've helped with, jobs, all this stuff. He's blown it right over and over again. And he doesn't call us because he thinks, hey, man, I can hustle them because he knows it's going to be hard. Yeah. But he calls because he knows these are the folks that care about me. They've been there for me. And... When he wants to go to rehab, he's like, he doesn't. He knows we're not gonna say, "Oh man, you've done it, and it's not worth it." Nah. Yeah. You know, so he's there now. Is this one take? I don't know, but he's there. Yeah. And he's trying, and he, you know, he reached out to us because over nine years, mm. I think we want we want things to be done quickly. We Absolutely. want things to be done. It's like, and I don't want to get. I don't want to it's like Amazon. Yeah, yeah, and even in the church, we <laughs> want to be like, I'm gonna go. You know, witness to this person, they're going to get saved, and or so, you know, and it's all like whatever that was done and move on and whatever. And that stuff's good. I'm not knocking it, but I'm saying like, you know, like laying the groundwork of I'm going to be a good neighbor to this person for the next ten years. Yeah. You know. And sure, along the way, I'm going to share with them. They're going to know who I'm about. They're going to know what I believe. I'm going to lay things out for them. I'm also going to be their neighbor right. and a good neighbor and love them for the next 10 years where they know I'm not just interested in selling them something and then moving on right. and establish, establishing that. I mean, that's what we're about. And we have systems and structures. So when someone gets that point okay. and they want to make a change, we've got access to help them get into drug and alcohol recovery centers. Uh, we we do a lot with mental health care. So several professional Christian counselors um, that we send our people to. They're not on our staff, but just that we partner with some really good ones in the area um, that we send them to because there's so much baggage that they're bringing to the table. Right. Trauma, abuse, addiction history, all this stuff. So they need time to un unpack that and not just be like, hey, man, you loser. Why don't you go get a job? Right. I mean, there's so much. They can go get a job. They'll get a job. They'll get fired next week. Right. Or they'll quit. But there's so much going on. We have a jobs program, so we partner with a landscaping company mm -hmm. uh, called Taproot Landscaping, who incredible. Uh, you can check out their website, like get, hire them to mow your grass. Yeah. But they're investing in guys that are trying to get back on their feet. So they've got a, a crew of guys that are stable and solid. Jacob runs that. We partner with them. I say, hey, Jacob, I got a guy. He says he wants to get to work. Can you put him to work for two weeks? Let's see if he's for real. And we can test him, vet him, yeah. see uh, – some companies like Marathon Electrical, uh, it's a massive company. Yeah. They care about our people. So if they do well there, they can move on. So we've got structures. We're not just right. hanging out and saying, hope it goes well. Yeah. But that's the, that hanging out, getting to know relationship buildings, the first step. And then we've got the structures after that. We're just not rushing in with the structures yeah, to you're, say. You're going flipping And we're around. taking it. We got, we, we're trusting the Lord's timing and say, hey, we're going to play this slow. We'll move fast when we need to move fast, sure. Right. But we're looking at this for the long game. The we're long not game. going anywhere. Right. And if it takes us a year to get to know this guy and build some trust, that's what it's going to take. How does someone get how does someone get in touch with you, get in touch with somebody at Urban Purpose to figure out, hey, I need I mean, would someone just contact you and say, yeah. Hey, I need help? So I mean, what's the what's the process there? People, I mean, they can go through our website. Right. If, Folks, you know that. But homeless people, to, homeless people might not have a website. They, well, they go to the, they do go to the library a lot. Uh, okay. And so and use computers there, so they don't have and so yes, um, they typically have like the like a real low end cell phone, like a burner. And so our we you know old school we got business cards. Right. Um, that's less for me handing to you, more for me handing 
to them and Jim handed it to them, Rachel uh, handed it to them. So our phone numbers are floating around yeah. everywhere. Um, web, yeah, website and phone. Gotcha. People just reach out to us. And then we have our steady, so we have a space downtown known as a compound. Cool. Um, it was called that before we started renting it. We just kept the name there, familiar with it. Uh, it's on 2nd Avenue North, okay. right in the heart of downtown. And we do stuff there every week. Hangout times, we watch movies, ball games, we have dinners, we do all sorts of stuff. And so if somebody says, that's well known down there amongst that community. And so for the, the homeless community in downtown, if they needed to talk to, and we do a back up too, we do a Sunday meal. Probably the most steady thing we do that we started way back when, we hadn't missed a Sunday in nine plus years. Um, so Sunday, three o'clock, they know we're serving a meal. So between the Sunday meal, the stuff at the compound, so we announce every Sunday, hey, yeah. we'll be here these times this week. They know how to find us. How many people are you feeding on Sunday at three? It depends on, I mean, weather, all sorts of stuff. I'd say between yeah. 80 and 100. That's great. So you go, uh, you know, on our website, there's a meal sign up and there's instructions. And so we have a lot of times of Sunday school classes, small groups, businesses, and that's a way for them to get involved. Right. So what we tried to do is to say, well, we were frustrated about having an infrastructure to step into. Right. And so you can come serve our meal every Sunday. And, but instead of saying, hey, just come serve our meal and then you know, get on our calendar three months from now or whatever, we also say you also have an open invitation to come back as just a volunteer next week and the next week. So we have people that never do meals. They just show up at three to hang out with hang out people. And so there are people um, from college age to, uh, you know, older ladies in our church. Right. And they come every Sunday. They don't do a meal, but they come every Sunday. And they're, and they, it's cool. Like they got their different things. One lady yeah. brings plastic bags, and that's her way. Hands out Walmart bags. People that need them to take a to-go plate. Yeah. And, she just hand, and that's a little connection. One guy brings a roll of trash bags. And so he's always the trash man. And it's just a connection point. Yeah. And we've got guys, it, all sort of, we've got stories of kids that have brought their parents and then their parents have been long-term, you know, involvement um, stuff. So it's cool because it's, it does have some infrastructure that you can step into, but very relational, yeah. very consistent. And so you can come to anything through the week that we've got going on our Sunday meal and say, hey, I met, you know, Steve at the meal. We had this great connection. We talked, whatever. I'll never see him again. It's like, no, I'll just come back Sunday. Come back next week. And he'll, yeah. he'll I guarantee you he'll be here. So just come back. So so this is a, a unbelievable ministry, unbelievable program. How are you guys, what, how are you guys funded? I mean, who 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 helps keep the lights on? And yeah. Pays the rent and all those different so types of things. So we are, I mean, predominantly just, you know, private donations, individuals okay. support us. We do, some companies support yeah. us, some incredible companies support us and some churches. Mm -hmm. um, in like uh, fundraisers that we do. Yeah. And so we do a couple fundraisers each year. And so they support that, sponsor that. But the large, um, overwhelming majority of our support comes from the individual that gives, you know, $25 a month or gives gotcha. $50 a month or gives, you know, $500 at, you know, the end of the year for their year end, giving, the year -end you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And then we do this, the, the um, fundraisers throughout the year right. that kind of that supplement that yeah and so we had a we did a fundraiser yep. we, we helped cook for you guys at a fundraiser uh, not too terribly long ago uh, yeah talk was, talk about that and like how what that was you know how that impacted your yeah so we did a career. banquet uh a few weeks ago for three and a half weeks ago um second one we've ever done yeah and so we've done a boston butt sale yeah. over the course of the years we've done 5ks crossfit competitions and still still do those things um but a couple years ago, decided or two years ago, decided we were going to try a banquet. Right. And so did that. And this last one was a huge success. Um, really did a lot for the ministry. Uh, put us on, you know, I mean, it's really stable place. It was really good for us. Um, sets us up to make some decisions on some things we've got coming up. Yeah. You know, that we can be in a position to actually do. And so um, we used the, the barn at Shady Lane. Yeah. Out, Great facility. Uh, incredible facility. Yeah. Uh, our music minister from, from church. Uh, they own that great facility. So we had that. It's a great atmosphere. Um, and just brought people like we had table leaders that, that invited, you know, three couples, you know, that might not know about the ministry come yeah. hear about it. 
Um, y'all did the food, crushed it, and it was just a great, it wasn't over the top. Yeah. You know, like where it was just like people were like, you know, it's like some black tie thing. It's casual, yeah. but nice. And man, it, it did an incredible uh, thing for the ministry. Just us to get people in that environment to tell our story. We did yeah. videos, had some speakers. Um, we don't go the route of getting the famous people to come do the speaking. Right. I mean, we get on the ground. So two years ago, a guy that uh, came to us, I mean, cool story, from my hometown. I didn't know him. Uh, parents, pastor, connect, contacted me. They shipped him down. He's on heroin. Came down here. We made a connection. Went to rehab. Got kicked out of rehab. Took him to another rehab. Got kicked out of that rehab. Took him back. He graduated. Amen. He uh, got a job with Marathon. He got married. They moved back to Bo they moved to Boston, where her family is from. They've got a kid. I mean, the dude's one of, a close friend of mine. He spoke at our first one. That's cool. uh, you know, and so that was cool. I had some volunteers. They made an impact of the ministry to speak at this one, and yeah, it's a super, super great event. Awesome. Um, what else? Anything else? Do you want to say about? About urban purpose, yeah. about what you what you do. I mean, any, anything at all that you think no, is I mean, just, good information. Yeah, we're I mean we're small, mm -hmm. um, and we like we've got three people on staff. So Jim and I are part time. Rachel, um, who's probably the most important piece of our team. Yeah, uh, she's she, great, yeah. she handles a lot of the ladies and the, the compound. She does incredible work. So it's us three, um, and then all the volunteers uh, that we have in place. And we'd love for people to just get involved. You go to our website. Uh, meal sign up mm -hmm. is there so uh, look at a meal sign up for your small group if under events it says uh, compound schedule so when we do movie nights all that stuff we do open mic nights we do worship open nights open mic nights tell me about that what are you doing is it comedy we're giving it's it can be it's more <laughs> like it ends up being more like music yeah singing but we again going back to we want these people to know that they're worth something that they have something to share. So we do an open mic night where um, all sorts of people, I mean, people that we uh, know that are like actual like musicians to people on the streets to whoever come, snacks, low-key feel, have a microphone, you get a couple minutes, you get to go up there. And so guy living on the streets, he gets a chance to get up there. You see some incredible talent. You see, sometimes the coolest thing is you see some people that are awful. They sing so bad, but it's so fun because yeah. they're they're smiling, people are clapping, and it's like that that might be the one time this week that they felt good about themselves. Right. And so we just want to give them an opportunity to feel like share who they are yeah. um, and express express who they are. Um, so we do those things. So you can go on the website, events, compound schedule, and you it's literally open to anybody. You don't have to sign up, just come. Perfect. Urbanpurpose.com. Urbanpurpose.org. Oh, okay. Urbanpurpose.org. Check that out. Um, and the only other plug I'd give is we do have a Boston butt sale going on right now awesome. for Memorial Day, and they're amazing. Um, and so you can go on there and see if you want to get something ready for the Thursday or Friday for Memorial Day. That's a way to support us. You 40 bucks, huge cooked Boston butt, fresh, um, cooked the night before, yeah. like overnight that night, and ready to go. And you can get that ready to go for Memorial Day. So that's a way people can support us too. Awesome. So today we talked to Mark Jenkins, who has, in essence, kind of flipped over the apple cart as far as just helping people in need. Um, helping people in need is a broad, broad category. And what these guys are doing is they're doing it on a relational level. They're not just getting people and putting them in rehab or getting people and you know trying to get them in jobs. What they're doing is they're reverse engineering this thing. They're creating relationships. The Bible talks about how all of us have worth and all of us are, we are all made in the image of God. And what, what Mark and the guys at Urban Purpose are doing is they're creating these relationships and getting these people in need from the homeless people to the people that are living in really, really nice homes that have these problems, they're getting them to trust them. They're creating that relationship so that they can help them in that way, which is an amazing thing. So I'm so glad you joined us today. If you have any questions about anything, urbanpurpose.org, uh, Mark uh, will answer the emails, all those things, and you can get involved there. Whether it be take your group down there, you go down there, take your family down there. This is a wonderful, wonderful way to get uh, anyone that you want to uh, involved in, in this community. So thank you so much, guys.